Jack to be in the end of the University of Tulsa's Reynolds Center in this afternoon's American Athletic Conference women's basketball game between the Memphis Tigers and the Golden Horn team of the University of Tulsa. Let's take a look. First, Liz at the Tigers starting lineup. Yeah, at the center you have Asiana Lukabe starting, a really good rebounding thread for Memphis. You have Taylor Williams at the forward position. Brianna Wright also a really good rebounding thread. She's averaging about 10 rebounds a game right now. Ariel, Ariel Hearn, their leading scorer at 16 points a game. And Mariah Rouser at the guard position. The Memphis Tigers 8-7 and seven on the year, 2-2 two and two in the American Athletic Conference. Now for the Tulsa Golden Hurricanes, 6-8 on the season, 1-2 in league play. For the center you're going to have Mariah Turner. She's going to match up well with Asiana Fukube, Ashley Clark, Clark at the forward position, Kelsey Grovey, who we've seen really come alive the last couple of games at the forward position. Erica Wakefield gets her first start today, and then Jordan Holmes also getting a start in today at the guard positions. Yeah, Coach uh, Matilda Mossman going with uh, two freshmen in her starting lineup for Memphis Tigers. That is Melissa McFerrin. As she gets her team ready to go, they're on a bit of a roll right now, coming in with two straight wins. Yeah, and I had a chance to talk to her before the game, and she's really excited to be here and wanting to extend that win. They beat East Carolina just a couple days ago at home, and then on the road got a really good win at, at, uh, at UCF. So coming off a couple good wins, and hopefully they can continue that today, is what she said. <laughs> Melissa in her uh, seventh season as the coach of the Tigers. There is Matilda Mossman in her fourth season as the head coach of the Golden Hurricane. She kind of made her name in the state of Oklahoma as a very successful basketball coach in mm -hmm. your side of the state in Norman, Oklahoma. Yes, yeah, she did. Really good high school coach. I played against Norman a couple of years of high school and scrimmaged them. And she always just has a really good program and really cares about her players. So she's just really in tune with basketball. Really good coach. Tulsa kind of break out of a two-game losing streak. They were on the road, lost to Central Florida. Good game, 76-70. Then they went up to number two UConn and uh, were handled 98 to 60 there by the number two team in the nation, the UConn Huskies. That game played in Hartford, Connecticut. So, uh, T hoping to get things uh, back on track here in a key conference game early on in the season. This is the University of Tulsa, by the way, is the first of three home games that should help them out here, Liz. They play tonight, today against Memphis. Wednesday, they'll host East Carolina at uh, 7 o'clock. Another game coming up on our American Digital Network. Then on Saturday, a week from uh, today, they'll be hosting uh, the Houston Cougars at 2 o'clock. That should be really good because you want you want a stretch of home games, you know, to kind of give you an advantage, give you a chance to kind of get some good games under your belt, a couple wins before you hit the road. So they have an advantage there. And for you Tiger fans, uh, Memphis will return home on the 14th this coming Wednesday to host Cincinnati, the 7 p.m. game. Then they turn around and go back on the road to East Carolina on the 18th and then uh, back home two weeks from today when they host the Houston Cougars at 2 o'clock. TU will be in their home whites in their uh, TU blue and gold. And the Memphis Tigers will be in blue and white here. So Tulsa starting with two freshmen for the first time in the lineup. Brianna Wright from Memphis, a jump against Ashley Clark for Tulsa. And the opening tip goes to the home team Golden Hurricane. Ashley Clark drives and throws it away. Probably wouldn't have been a bad time to kind of set up and see what Memphis is going to do, you know, defensively and kind of run a play. I see what she was trying to do with the backside dish, but it just wasn't there at that point. Ariel Hearn gets things rolling here for the Memphis Tigers. Trying to get the pass inside and a quick whistle. Foul is going to be called. Fuqua Bay always posts really hard defensive, I mean offensively, so the defense is going to have to really be aware of when she's trying to seal, when they're trying to feed her, because she's one, she's not one you want to play with down there. <laughs> Kelsey Groby got the first whistle of the game again for T Tulsa. Inside, Brianna Wright won't go, rolls it out of the rim and out, and back come the Golden Hurricane. Erica Wakefield, freshman, her sixth start.
Kelsey Grove with the left hand. It won't fall either. So early on, hard to get something to fall right now. Taylor Williams for the Tigers. Out on front to Brianna Wright. Works it over to Hearn. And in the corner it goes back to uh, Asiana, Hukar Bay. And they tell me I can call it Asia. I think I'll do that for the rest of the game. <laughs> nice steal there by Erica Wakefield. The freshman drives down, puts the right hand, and that's our first bucket of the game. The 18-48 mark for Tulsa as they take a 2-0 lead here. And she's one of their better defenders. You know, she's quick, she's tenacious, she's trying to find out where the ball is going to go, and right there she just read the pass and ended up getting a fast break. Hearn comes over to uh, Asia, and into the corner it goes. Brian Rouser. One on one with Kelsey Grovey. Now outside it goes to Williams. Her shot won't fall. And the Tigers get the rebound, though, as Asia, Asia comes out to pick it up. And the follow up shot is no good by Rouser, but another offensive rebound for the Tigers. Keeping it alive. Nice drive with the right hand and in for the first points for Memphis, Ariel Hearn. Really nice drive there by Hearn. That play kind of was kept going alive by Wright, though. She's averaging 10 rebounds a game, so you have to make it a point to find her and box her out. Hearn, their leading scorer this season, over 16 points a game. She was first team uh, all conference in the American Athletic Conference last year as a sophomore. We're tied at two. And that one will not fall for Jordan Holmes. Freshman making her first start. She had a breakout game though against Connecticut last uh, time out. 17 points at UConn. Her directing traffic on top. And a whistle. Little body call there. Got to be able to slide your feet, and not really get a hand check. Just stay low and be ready for the dribble or, or the shot, whichever one. Two teams really pretty close. Uh, Tulsa averages 68 points a game, giving up 68.4 points a game. Memphis averages 61.3 a game, giving up 60.6 a game. So they're playing close. Oh, bad miss there. Back come Tulsa. Whistle. And a foul is going to be called. I think it's going to be on Tulsa. Looks like yeah. there's going to be a lot of battling down down low. The foul on Mariah Turner with the offensive foul posting up just pushed down Fuqua Bay a little bit. And they're really going to be battling because I see them kind of getting a little aggressive with each other down there. And the ball is tipped and Tulsa will get it on the turnover. Outside it goes. Ashley Clark can't get the three-pointer to fall. Back come the Tigers. Not a bad shot in transition led by Erica Wakefield. They're really pushing it up the floor, finding Clark wide open. It's a good shot. She shoots 30% from the three-point line. Nice shot. Good looking jumper there by Brianna Wright. Brianna Wright, leading rebounder. And has had nine rebounds each of her last three games that uh, also can score some. Eight, average eight points a game. Memphis really trying to limit what happens inside as they're in a, looks like a 2-3 zone, not really letting Turner post up a lot. They're just shifting with the, with the offense. Jordan Holmes trying to drive the baseline, a whistle and a foul call on Memphis, so Tulsa will have the ball coming under their own basket. Plenty of time left on the shot clock, and up with the left hand, no good is Mariah Turner, and a jump ball is going to be called. Possession arrow. Goes to Memphis, so the Tigers take over the 16.05 mark. Good move there by Turner. She she doesn't really put the ball on the ground a lot, which is something that's really important for five players because dribbling the ball, trying to get a power dribble, smaller players can come in there and kind of get a hand in. But right there, she just caught it and tried to do a little left-hand hook shot and just missed it barely, but eventually it'll fall. Tigers on the attack now. Nice jumper there by Mariah Rouser, 5'9", sophomore, Rockville, Maryland. She was uh, on the all-freshman team for the American Athletic Conference last year. I remember seeing her play last year and uh, thinking to myself that she really is a true freshman, just somebody that comes in and does, you know, what she can and makes an impact. The three will not go for Erica Wakefield. Also very cold starting off shooting here so far. Memphis with a 6-2 lead. This is uh, 
Taylor Williams drops it off for her, and she drives and scores. I mean, and she's a small player. She's very thin. She's about five, six, five, seven. But for her to just be very aggressive and try to split those defenders and finish is really good. Well, Coach Matilda Moss been a bit concerned about her uh, Tulsa Golden Hurricane with a cold start, about as cold as it is outside today in the 20s here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We'll take our first break at 15.07 left in the opening half. It's Memphis 8, Tulsa 2 on the American Digital Network. University of Tulsa, a nationally ranked private university. Welcome back to the University of Tulsa's Reynolds Center here on the campus of uh, University of Tulsa here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And Memphis leading with 8-2 so far. The Memphis Tigers have dominated offensively. A couple replays for you. There you see Ariel Hearn just splitting those two defenders, finishing easily with the right hand. Right here, she... You find Wright with the step out about 10 feet from the basket, just a nice, easy finish. Tulsa kind of laying back defensively. Right there, you have Mariah Rouser with the one dribble, two dribble pull up. Right here, you find Ariel Hearn splitting two defenders again and finishing with the right hand on the left side of the basket. So they're doing, you know, a really good job as far as attacking and trying to find the best shot for, for their offense right now, Memphis is. They're shooting four for eight right now compared to Tulsa's one for six. So you can kind of see that Tulsa's probably going to get a little frustrated if they don't start knocking down some shots. They're 0 for 3 from the three-point line, so maybe they should start trying to penetrate the middle a little more. And Matilda Mossman, I'm sure working things out of that uh, quick break here, and we're back to play. Tulsa with the basketball and trailing by six. They made a substitution uh, change for TU. Uh, Caden Brady has come in the game for the University of Tulsa. Ashley Clark drives, drops it off in the lane, and there's a short shot by Turner will not fall. Out of bounds. They'll stay with the Golden Hurricane, the fresh 30-second shot clock. I almost would have preferred Clark to just try and finish that because it was like she passed it behind her away from the basket, and she was closer at a better shot. Just coming in the game, Caden Brady makes an immediate impression with a three-pointer for Tulsa. Just what they needed is until the Moss went to her bench and brought Caden Brady in and Tiana Reed and took out the two freshmen pretty quickly. You're going to have to get a hand in Caden Brady's face because she's shooting about 38% from the three-point line. So you, don't, you need to know where she is at all times. Shot would not fall, and Memphis though gets an offensive rebound. They've dominated the boards as well so far early in this contest. There's Yanafu Kambe with the uh, nice turnaround there. Tulsa trying to drive and a whistle, and it's going to be a charging call, call on Ashley Clark. She thought she had an opening for a moment there, and it closed pretty quickly, mm -hmm. Liz. Good couple possessions there for Fuqua Bay. She's finishing at the basket and then hustles down the floor, gets herself in position to take a charge. Now Memphis has the ball back. Clark doesn't agree with that call. <laughs> a little frustrated there. <laughs> Our game officials, you're looking there at Jennifer Rizak, uh, Wesley Dean, and Tom Danaher is assigned by the American Athletic Conference. Our game officials this afternoon here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Cold but clear. It's been unseasonably cold here in uh, uh, the Sooner State. Temperatures in the 20s and teens, and uh, nobody's enjoying it this time of year. Not uh. at all. <laughs> I, I got up for work the other day, and I left, and the wind chill was negative 2 degrees, yeah. and I just wanted to cry. But I know <laughs> it would have frozen on my face had I cried, <laughs> right. so I didn't even cry. <laughs> but no snow and ice like so much of the rest of the country is yeah. getting, so we can't complain too much about that. Ryan Rouser now between the circles now, and the ball is knocked away, and trying for the steal there was Jordan Holmes for Tulsa. Went off of... Uh, Ms. Holmes, so Memphis will inbound. <laughs> Rouser to start it. Jumper won't fall for a Rouser. Rebound comes down to Yukon Bay, though, and she comes in with a left hand. Nice job by Isiana. Lays it in with a left hand, and 
she now is really dominating so far inside 12-5 Memphis. And we talked about her before the game having to box her out and limit what she does, and they're not doing that right now. They're hardly boxing out at all. <laughs> Okay. Deanna Reed for Tulsa. And it comes in the lane. She's scooping up with the left hand. Right hand actually caught. Nicely done by the 5'11 junior. Really good finish. She could have tried to finish with the left, but she saw a small opening with the right and just a nice little finger roll. Her to the pass inside it comes and just missing the inside shot. There's Courtney Powell is in the game now for the Tigers for the first time today. Jumper from outside. No good for uh, Tulsa's Caden Brady who hit the three earlier in her first attempt. Nice pass and down inside it goes and Mariah, Mariah Rouser up and in the sophomore. Really good pass by Hearn there. I mean, it had no loft on it. It was a direct pass to Rouser. Nice finish on the right-hand side. Very good court vision by Hearn there. Clock out to Brady. Then to Tiana Reed. Clark thought about it, but mm -hmm. then went back to Tiana Reed with the ball. Trying to get inside. A lot of Memphis Tigers in there and knocked away intended inside there for Mariah Turner, but picked up by the Tigers, and back comes Memphis now. Tulsa looking a little bit tired, not really getting over screens and just kind of let Memphis do a little bit of whatever they want. Rouser missed outside and just missing inside was Taylor Williams. Back comes TU, down 14-7 here. Pass in the corner, Jordan Holmes going to take the shot, in and out will not fall. Rebound taken down though for the Golden Hurricane by Caden Brady and outside the shot up, no good by Tiana Reed. Tulsa, cold shooting so far. Back come the Tigers. Hearn slows it down now to uh, Dufour Bay. Down inside to Powell. Powell trying to get a shot up. Won't fall. On the floor they go for it now. Battling and a jump ball. This time the possession arrow will go to the home crowd, the University of Tulsa. We have our first media timeout here at 11.21 left in the first half. And Memphis has doubled up Tulsa 14-7. They're watching the Welcome back, Chris Lincoln, along with uh, Liz Lee here at the University of Tulsa's Reynolds Center on the, the University of Tulsa campus. Liz, so far, as a matter of uh, Tulsa cold shooting so far in this game, 3 of 12, Tigers 7 of 16. That's just a really rough start for Tulsa. 3 yeah. of 12, it's really hard to kind of get out of that slump, but I think if they just took the time to kind of set the offense up and find the best scoring opportunity, their scoring percentage would be higher because from Memphis right now, they're they're really penetrating the basket. They're realizing that around the basket it's gonna, it's, is where they're going to get a lot of their points. So I think it just takes yeah. a little bit of time to figure it out. Give an update on the American Athletic Conference standing for women's basketball and uh, the mighty UConn Huskies, number two in the nation with a 13-1 record. Three on the conference and two other unbeaten teams in conference play so far, Liz. Yeah, you have UCF right there at 3-0, followed by Temple also at 3-0, Tulane at 3-1, followed by UCF, Memphis, Tulsa, Cincinnati at 1-3, Houston at 1-3. And then Memphis at 1 and 2, SMU at 0 and 3, and East Carolina at 0 and 4. No surprise, the Connecticut Huskies is dominating as they do almost every season and almost every team. <laughs> Boy. I mean, they're, they're just going to be good. You know, that's just one thing you have to accept in sports is that UConn women's basketball, they're going to be a top team forever. <laughs> Memphis shooting 43.8%, Tulsa shooting 25% so far, which explains the uh, double. Margin here, 14-7 for Memphis. Tulsa in their home white. Bring the basketball up the floor. Trying to get a pass inside was Tiana Reed looking for uh, Jordan Holmes, but a little too far for her, so it's a turnover against uh, Tulsa. 
It's a good thought, though. I like the back door. I like that they tried to set something up right now. I mean, they've shot seven threes so far and have only made one, whereas Memphis has only shot one and missed it, but they're just taking better shots. It's Tulsa's fifth turnover so far in the first half. Memphis has three inside. A nice power move there. Scoring for the Tigers is a Cheyenne Creighton, the 6'1 freshman in the game for the first time. Young lady from Ontario, Canada. Playing her basketball at Memphis, Tennessee. Ball is kicked, so it'll be Tulsa basketball outside. The zone defense right now for Memphis is really working because if they were one-on-one -on -one and it was a man-on-man -on -man defense, Tulsa could create a little bit more and kind of get to the basket. But right now they're just in the zone and just kind of guarding the area and not really letting a lot of things happen. Jordan Holmes comes out. Kelsey Grovey comes back in the Tulsa lineup. Golden Hurricane also has bought an Antoinette Webster, number 15. And now they switched it up and they're in a man. So I guess I spoke a little too soon. <laughs> <laughs> Grovey driving up with left hand and hits it from the baseline. They need her to get going. She had a career game last time we were here. She did, and she kind of fuels the offense. Like, her energy's always really high. She's always talking. She can get to the basket and create for herself and other players. So if she gets going, I'm sure Tulsa will kind of get out the slump a little bit. Jumper by Ariel Hurd will not fall, but a foul call on Memphis. And Tulsa will get the best one. Courtney Powell whistled for her first foul of the contest, and Tulsa will take it. Caden Brady will start it for uh, Tulsa. In the lineup also is Tiana Reed, Kelsey Grovey, Mariah Turner, and Antoinette Webster on the floor for the Golden Hurricane right now. Grovey trying to make a move at the top of the circle. Gets in the lane, now kicks it outside. Caden Brady. She needs some help. And Grovey starts it again. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Inside it goes to Turner and it falls for it. Mariah Turner, a nice shot there. And Tulsa closing in, 16-11. Nice patient possession there by Tulsa. You see him starting to really come alive. Inside move, trying to get free if he gets the shot up. Will not fall for Brianna Wright. And Tulsa picks up the basketball. Back come the Golden Hurricane. Grovey in the corner, open is Brady, and Brady hits the three. That's her second three of the afternoon. She's the 5'9 senior, three-year letterman out of Hilton, Oklahoma. They ran that play for her. Brady was on one side and then just ran the baseline, and they set a screen, and it just opened her wide up. And that quickly toasted down a moment ago. 14-7 is out just down by two, 16-14. Under nine minutes in the first half. Inside it goes. Up with the right hand and bounces in for Cheyenne Creighton. I mean, Memphis definitely has some inside game between Creighton, Wright, and Fuqua Bay. I mean, you're going to get tired dealing with all three of those because you have fresh legs coming in every time. With the shot for Tulsa, Antoinette Webster will not fall for her. Back come the Tigers. Outside the shot, beautiful. Ariel Hearn hits it from there. And that is the word. She really just does have a beautiful shot. She makes it look really easy. She sets her feet. Nothing really looks forced. She's shooting 35% from the three-point line. So she just has a really good feel out, out around the three-point line. And Memphis gets her lead back to seven again on that three-pointer. Nice drive. It will not go, though, for Brady. A whistle foul underneath. And that's on Tulsa's Goliath Turner, 32. We'll keep it right here as we have another media timeout. The 7.53 mark with uh, Memphis building their lead now to 21 to 14. And again, how quickly things change in basketball. That three-pointer is a real factor. It really is. Caden Brady coming up off the bench for today's game and just knocking down two threes. And really, it was Caden Brady's three, and then Kelsey Grovey found Turner down there, and then they knocked down another three. So they had a couple possessions back-to-back -back where they were just trying to you know, come alive and do some things. And now Memphis getting a little bit frustrated, still doing some good things down low, but just getting a little frustrated, forcing that timeout. Take a look ahead of the schedule for both these teams for the Memphis Tigers coming up on January uh, 
14th. They'll be back home to host the uh, Bearcats of Cincinnati on the road at East Carolina on the 18th. Back home uh, on the 24th, uh, two weeks from now, to host the Houston Cougars. And at Cincinnati, the 28th, South Florida sounds like a nice trip on the 31st, <laughs> <I know. laughs> Liz. And then they'll go to Philadelphia to start February, uh, play the Owls at Temple now for Tulsa. And the upcoming games for Tulsa, January 14th, you have East Carolina here at home, the 17th also hosting Tulsa. They're going to leave for Tulane on the 20th, and then at, on the 24th they'll play East Carolina. The 28th they'll come back for two home games, the 28th and 31st, SMU and then UCF. So today's game, East Carolina and Houston, three back-to-back -back home games. That should be really good for Tulsa. And that uh, next home game coming up on Wednesday, the 14th. You'll be here, right? American I will Digital be Network here. game with our friend <laughs> Bruce Howard, the voice of the Golden Hurricane, and just named the Sports Cat of the Year in Oklahoma. Oh, that's amazing. So congratulations to Bruce Howard, and he'll be uh, having the play-by-play -play duties there. This Live View broadcast is brought to you by Live View Sports, the leader in turnkey live video production for sports, powering digital sports networks, live game production, and tram transmission. Visit Live View Sports at www.liveviewtv.tv. A lot of dots in there. You can find him, though. Ariel, Ariel Hearn, who just scored for the Memphis Tigers, keying their offense right now, working with uh, Ray Elmore, is in the game for the first time. Back out it goes. The drive by Elmore pulls up with a jumper, no good, and the rebound comes down for the Golden Hurricane to Antoinette Webster. And Tulsa back the other way. Groby outside Webster, wide open, hesitates, almost pulled the trigger, then dropped it off to Groby. She'll take it, hits it with the left hand for two. Kelsey Groby hits the two-pointer. Good decision there by Webster. She kind of thought about the shot, but realized Kelsey Groby had a better shot. Yukar Bay again scoring. She's been a big factor here. She now has six points. Only Ariel Hearn with seven points. Doing better in the game so far. Caden Brady has six on two threes for Tulsa at this point. Tulsa will keep the ball. Knocked out of bounds there. Really good block there by Fuqua Bay. She just came out of nowhere. Really, I didn't even see her, and I don't, I don't think Webster saw her either, or she wouldn't have shot that shot, but she came out of nowhere and knocked it out of bounds. Uh, 23, Ashley Clark in for Tulsa, replacing Antoinette Webster, number 15, sets down. A drive will not go for uh, Brady, and back come uh, the Memphis Tigers. Inside the pass from Hearn to Bay. Oh, misses it. Had it and lost it again. Now Tulsa trying to get their break going here. Long pass down to Kelsey Grovey. She drops it off for Ashley Clark on the run, and she's fouled as she drove for the basket. You see down there Grovey asking for help help side on Fuqua Bay. She kind of played the high side, got that pass into Fuqua Bay, and it was a slight mismatch, but she just barely missed it, and then good, good offensive transition down here. Banner Wright gets the foul. Team fouls so far, pretty even. Memphis has five, Tulsa with four. Uh, so, uh, excuse me, Memphis with uh, three team fouls and Tulsa with five at this point. Free throw for Tulsa's Ashley Clark. She'll have another one. Clark makes your free throws. Tulsa goes back in 23-17 here. Coming down to the six-minute mark in this first half from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Whistle and a foul as Bay was trying to make a move there. And really looking for the inside game right now. Campbell and Creighton are really battling down there. Creighton's posting up really hard, but Campbell's Really holding her own. Under six minutes in this first half. Memphis trying to add to their lead of 23-17. Hearn kicks it back outside. Cross-court pass. Rouser now in the lane. She can't get a shot up. Nine seconds on the shot clock, and the shot's taken no good by Hearn. And Tosa with the rebound. 
not a bad shot. It was right on target, just maybe a little more leg, get the ball up a little bit more. Ashley Clark. Good way to Ashley Hughes here. Ashley Hughes is quite a story here. We'll talk about her. The University of Connecticut uh, <laughs> left a couple of teeth on the floor, didn't she? Yeah. <laughs> we'll tell you more about that later on here. Nice job by Grovey there for Tulsa. Rouser back to Hearn. Tulsa showing their zone defense right now, Liz, trying to get some help mm -hmm. underneath here. There's a nice steal. Grovey picks up the loose basketball, and back comes Tulsa. On the run, 23, the layup, and that is actually Clark, the junior. Puts it up and in. Good find there by T. Reed. I mean, she got the fast break. Clark ran with her. The no look, finish on the right side. It's good offense there. Good defense, fueling good offense. The other Ashley we're talking about is Tulsa's Ashley Hughes, number 13, 5, 7, somewhere. Take a look at this picture. <laughs> That's what happened to her at the University of Connecticut. She made all the uh, big national stories. The uh, headline on ESPN, proof that Ashley Hughes is the toughest player in women's basketball. I would not disagree with that. Teeth, like, we, yes, we get hit in the nose, and, you know, you're going to get an elbow here, but teeth, like, those are you're, those are with you forever. <laughs> yeah. now. First half of summer, she had a scary collision. Uh, the Kia nurse uh, diving for a loose ball. Broker that you see saw the two front teeth there. She put a mouth guard in and kept playing. Uh, talked to uh, Matilda Lawson before the game, the Tulsa coach. She said that uh, tough young lady. They've uh, got a couple caps on it, and she'll have some more dental work done, but she's out there playing. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's better than me. <laughs> <laughs> A little pressure for Tulsa for the first time, Liz. Yeah, it's a good little little pressure coming out of the, the timeout there, trying to frazzle Memphis a little bit. Heron drops it off for Rouser. Rouser's shot won't fall. And underneath for Tulsa is Artura Campbell, the 6'2 sophomore from Topeka, Kansas, brings the rebound down for Tulsa, and a whistle and a foul is going to be called inside. Reed does a good job of really trying to push the ball up the floor. Reed and Erica Webster really try to push the ball in transition, try to get deep into the into the lane before they kind of run the offense. They're doing a lot of driving kicks. No, oh, nice feed inside, and it goes to Kelsey Grovey from uh, Tiana Reed, right on the inbounds play, and they run that nicely, and we're tied all of a sudden at 23. Now, turnover and against Memphis, so back come the Golden Hurricane. And Tulsa really coming alive, and we just said earlier that once Grovey starts to kind of come alive and make some things happen, that the offense will flow a little better, and that's what's happening right now. Tiana Reed, inside it comes. Shot will not fall for Artura Campbell, and Memphis gets the rebound. Hearn drives as a knocked away from behind by the quick hands of Keanu Reed. Media timeout under the four minute mark here. 345 left here in this uh, first half. And Tulsa's battled back here, Liz, at the trail by as many as seven points. They've tied this game now at 23 apiece here. Take a look at some of the Tulsa highlights so far here in this first half. They really have come alive right there. Caden Brady just immediately coming into the game, knocking down the three-point shot. Good offense right here by Tiana Reed. Also finding Caden Brady in the corner off the baseline run for the three. Right here you have Clark finding Grovey. Just a quick, like, off the screen, one dribble pull up. Tiana Reed leading right now. The no-look pass to Clark, finishing on the right-hand side. I mean, they're doing some really, really good things. And right here, this, this out-of-bounds play, just right there, way too easy. Grovey just finishing on the left-hand side. That's just really, really easy. I'm sure McFerrin is saying something about that right now. And we have a little tricycle race going on here at the uh, <laughs> Reynolds Center at the University of Tulsa campus there. Is it bad that I kind of want to participate? Like, <laughs> is it bad? Every time I see it, I'm like, that looks kind of fun. It does look like fun, yeah? Now they're going to go back the other side here. <laughs> well, my legs are too long and my <laughs> right. something else is too big to fit in a little seat anyway. So it wouldn't work very well for me, I'm afraid. <laughs> and the young lady, I, I, of course, I had my money on the other one. Like right. being at the racetrack for me as usual. <laughs> Nicely done, ladies. There, fun to hear time for the crowd here at the Reynolds Center. 
Tulsa improving their shooting some uh, now. They've uh, jumped up from uh, 25% to 41% so far. Memphis down to 42%. And that's huge because now they're kind of evenly matched. You know, they're shooting 25% from the three, and Memphis is shooting 33%. But as far as just possessions and shot selection, Tulsa's doing a better job of that. I'm sure Coach Mossman said something about running the offense or just kind of calming down and not letting the defense distract them. Memphis now with the game tied, 23, losing their lead, trying to get it back in sync here. Ariel Hearn, double team, and the ball's knocked away and stolen for Tulsa. Ashley Clark got the turnover. Johnny Reed sets the offense, 15 seconds on the shot clock. Campbell. Give and go there and it would not fall, but knocked out of bounds. Uh, Tanner Reed shot and missed, but knocked away by Memphis. So Tulsa has the ball with 12 seconds on the shot clock. Reed had a nice inbound pass to Groby a moment ago. Seemed to know, couldn't get anything loose underneath there, so Groby out on top. See Groby trying to create something for herself. Yeah. There's that three point shooter again. Nicely done. like Ashley Hughes yeah. with that last three-pointer. I kind of want her to just stay out of traffic because I get nervous with her <laughs> teeth. <laughs> I know. How about that for Ashley? Young lady you just saw a moment ago with the two broken front teeth in the UConn game. Goes back to the three. There's another three for Tulsa. That one from Gianna Reed. All of a sudden, Tulsa has heated up and jumped out to a 29-23 lead here over Memphis. She doesn't shoot a whole lot of threes, but she's shooting 53% for the ones that she does shoot. So... She's definitely somebody you don't want to leave open in transition, especially on the three-point line. Pass from her and comes inside, up with a shot, and nicely done again by Asia. Asia, if I kind of procure, say that again for Fuqua her. Bay. Fuqua Bay. <laughs> that's right. Fuqua Bay. Fuqua Bay with six points for Memphis. Well, they're leading scorers to this point. Oh, Groby trying to get the long pass stolen away from Memphis there, and they break the other way here. Nice lead pass and lay up with the right hand. A nice lay up there for Mariah Rouser. Nice finish, good court yep. vision. This young Memphis team really does have good court vision. They're always sending one to run and looking for them up the floor. Good, good defensive run through by Reed there, but just couldn't quite get the ball. Oh, another turnover for Tulsa, throwing that one away. Memphis the basketball coming down to the final 90 seconds here of this opening half. To this point, two ties, two lead changes. Tulsa has 16 fouls. The next one would send Memphis to the free throw line. Something to keep an eye on. Rouser to Hearn. Hearn looking inside, now drives the lane, lays it up for the right hand, and spins out, won't go, and she's called for charging anyway. So, charging foul against uh, Lariel Hearn, who's not a real big young lady, just 5'7", and, and very small. Very small, but she has a lot, of, a lot of heart. She drove hard in the lane, but charging call against Memphis, that's their fifth team foul. She does, you can see her getting a little bit frustrated. She's really, I feel like she's trying to force the offense right now and try to create a lot of things when really she should just let some things kind of come to her and happen. Nice drive there by Tulsa's Ashley Clark. The 5'11 junior, two-year letter winner and starter. Has had eight double-doubles uh, so far this season. In the lane, nice shot of the right hand, no good, would not fall for Bria Elmore. Follow up is good though by number 10, Cheyenne Creighton. Tulsa back with 45 seconds left. Drive and a whistle is going to be called. A blocking foul inside. That was Tulsa's Ashley Clark on the drive there. That's on her again. Looks like she was set. She just wasn't angled right. Didn't get that straight on hit. Ashley Clark hits the first of her two free throws. He's now two or three in the free throw line. Ashley, that was her six points so far. Oh, wow. 
would not go. Tulsa's lead is three with 40 seconds to play in this opening half. Stay with us at halftime. The American Athletic Conference with their special halftime show they provide us with. Also to come, uh, let's talk to both coaches. We'll be visiting them in the second half. Nice job in the left hand. Up and in for the Tigers by number 10, Cheyenne Creighton, the 6'1 freshman out of Canada's come in and made a good impression on this club so far. Really good find again by Ariel Hearn and then very strong finish there, like you said, by Cheyenne Creighton. Shot clock is off. We're under seven seconds now to end the first half here. Tulsa, one-point lead. Now get the buzzer. Shot is up. No good. And Tulsa kind of left that one waste away. Tiana Reed just took a desperation shot there at the very end. And we end up the first 20 minutes. Heck of a basketball game here at the Reynolds Center. The University of Tulsa leading Memphis 32 to 31. Chris Lincoln back along here with Liz Lay. Your impressions of that first half, Liz? I think the first half was definitely split down the middle. I think the first 10 minutes, Memphis came ready. They were taking some good shots, really finding what works for them while Tulsa kind of lagged behind. And, the, and then I think at the 10 minute mark, it switched. Yeah. And Tulsa kind of picked it up and came out of the slump a little bit. And Memphis got a little frustrated. So I think it was evenly split. I think they both did some good things. Memphis really trying to find points around the basket and then Tulsa really coming down running the offense Caden Brady leading them with a couple threes yeah. Tiana Reed knocking down a three Kelsey Grovey doing a little bit so I think it was pretty even Tulsa Pom Pom girls and cheerleaders and Captain Kane entertaining the crowd <laughs> here at the Reynolds Center you see the golden hurricane flags here on the center court and we'll have a chance to go to our halftime entertainment now with uh, action from our American Athletic Conference back at the center there. Let's go back there. American Digital Network. While Memphis and Tulsa are in the locker room, let's take a look at what's been going on around the league. UConn remains ranked at number two in the national polls, sitting right behind South Carolina. But that could all change soon when the Huskies host the Gamecocks on February 9th. Also getting some national attention, the USF Bulls are receiving votes in the AP poll. Temple went undefeated last week before dropping a close game to Penn on Monday. Junior guard Erica Coville earned American Player of the Week honors after a pair of career games in Temple's 3-0 week. She averaged about 22 points and 14 rebounds per game against SMU in Cincinnati and notched her fourth consecutive double-double against the Bearcats. UCF picked up a win over Tulsa last week with a major contribution from the freshman of the week, Aaliyah Gregory. She scored 21 points against the Golden Hurricane, but more importantly, helped seal the win in the final seconds by blocking a three-point attempt, securing the loose ball, and drawing a foul. She made both free throws with 13 seconds remaining to secure the 76-70 win. Here's a look at a few other players that made an impact in the American last week. UConn junior guard Mariah Jefferson averaged over 16 points per game in the Huskies 3-0 week. Memphis junior guard Ariel Hearn had 26 points, two rebounds, and two assists off the bench in an overtime win against East Carolina on Sunday. Tulsa junior guard Kelsey Grovey led Tulsa in scoring, averaging about 21 points per game in a one-in-one -one week for the Golden Hurricane. USF junior forward Alicia Jenkins recorded her 10th double-double of the season in Sunday's win at Tulane. And UCF sophomore Zakira Lewis notched her seventh 20-point game of the year a game-high 25 points in the Knights win versus Tulsa. A lot of veteran experience on the honor roll this week, but that doesn't mean that the young ones can't make a difference. Coming up next, we're going to talk about what makes the transition from high school to college ball so difficult.
Each year, coaches head on the road to recruit the top high school basketball recruits from around the nation and even around the world. Talented recruiting classes are key to keeping your program competing at the highest level, but it's no secret that high school and college are two extremely different levels of play. I had a chance to sit down with some of the league's coaches and find out their thoughts on the challenges freshmen face when they step foot on campus. Um, high school to college, there's a, there's a lot of coach, I'm tired, and there's a lot of I don't care if you're tired, we still need to practice hard. And um, we don't deal with the injuries the same way they do in high school. You know, in high school they go sit on the side, in college you don't. Um, but I, I'm seeing really good things. We've got two freshmen in particular that we're seeing really good things from. And that's Bria Elmore from the Atlanta area and Shy Creighton from Canada. These kids have, have played at a high level, Shy with the young Canadian national team and Bria with our high school team that won a state championship. And what we're seeing from those kids is they really want to be good players. The speed of the game on the college level is so much faster. Uh, they're going to see that once we get into a 40 minute game as opposed to in practice we're able to stop it. So that's number one. I think the level of intensity that these kids have to keep up for a good amount of time, more so the intense practices, the, the detail of practices, the, the structure, uh, it's just it's just to another level. I think it's difficult for them to understand playing hard. Obviously, we're always talking about playing hard, and they think that they're going hard, but you know, there's another level that you can get to. Um, but probably defensively, just understanding defense and you know, help defense, uh, being in the right positions. In high school, they're just running around guarding one p person, but just the concepts of it all. Well, I think freshmen play different roles. I mean, this, our two freshmen are coming in are, are coming into a veteran team, so you know we, they're able to, to learn the system at their own pace, and, and I think they both will be contributors to us, but they don't have to be thrown to the wolves right away. So, um, you know, I, I definitely believe our freshmen are really competitive. I think our upper classmen have really uh, shown them how it's done and really set a precedent on how to play and um, that's only going to make us better. Understanding how hard you have to work every day, you know, on a consistent basis. You know, they're not used to the three-hour practices where you're running up and down and you have to get in shape and then you have to go left and then you have to go to study hall and, you know, put the proper foods and, and, and things in your body and get the proper rest. So just that adjustment of how important those things are to how well you're going to be able to perform on the court and just getting them educated in those things and having them buy in and understanding if you do these things the right way you know more often than not you know you're not going to be tired you know you're not going to have the the injuries that you will have because you're not giving yourself the proper nutrition and rest so just educating them because we're going to need them and so we need to do our part in making sure that they give us 110 percent based on the decisions that they make there is one coach who has a slightly different approach when it comes to adapting freshmen to the college game. East Carolina's Heather Macy has implemented a mandatory redshirt system for her newcomers so that they have a year to learn and develop before competing in their first collegiate game. Emotionally, mentally, the maturity level that they gain after that year, they're in practice. Uh, we don't have them miss reps, which is maybe a little different than some places that redshirt is they get every single rep, they know what we do, and, um, and then we run a system so that the more that they play in that system, the better that they are. Uh, and then the way that they mature physically is really, really unbelievable. If you could just do before and after pictures, I think it would uh, be eye-opening to see that as well. Well, I'm a testament to that. I redshirted my first year here, and I've had great results. So. I think it's an excellent theory, um, being through it personally. And just being able to watch the game. Um, we have a thing called red shirt workouts, and I've gotten so much stronger, and so much stronger, and you can really see that translate into my game, um, rebounding, finishing stronger. So a lot of that has a big impact on how you play. No doubt about it, it takes a lot of work for freshmen to get up to speed on playing at the next level. And the development is important if you plan on being one of the top teams in the nation. Coming up, we take a look at three of our very own campuses where the country's top teams will be competing through 2020. It's every 
the postseason and compete with the best teams from around the country. And over the next five years, three American schools will host NCAA regionals and Final Fours. USF will co-host the 2015 Final Four at Amelie Arena in Tampa. The arena, normally home to the NHL's Tampa Bay Lightning, has hosted the NHL All-Star Game as well as three previous NCAA men's tournaments. UConn will host the NCAA Regionals in 2016 and 17 at Webster Bank Arena in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Bridgeport has hosted UConn in Regionals in the past, most recently 2013, where the Huskies used it as a springboard to the national championship. American teams will host the Final Fours in 2019 and 2020. In 2019, the action returns to Tampa, while in 2020, Tulane will host in New Orleans. Speaking of the postseason, I'm sure Memphis and Tulsa would like to end up there themselves. Thanks for hanging out with us at halftime. The second half is just moments away. For the American Digital Network, I'm Haley Outen. University of Tulsa, a nationally ranked private university. Hey, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, welcome back everyone. Chris Lincoln along with Liz Lay here. And Liz, a uh, tight ball game, 32-31 Tulsa. They trailed early in this game with some cold shooting right off the bat. And uh, they got things right and then uh, made it, made, jumped off to a pretty good six, seven point lead. Back come the Tigers here, one point game at halftime. It has been a really close game. Like I said earlier, before half, the first 10 minutes of the first half was really Memphis you know, kind of coming alive and doing some good things. And then Tulsa kind of came back. Right now, Tulsa shooting 44% yeah. from the floor. And early on, they were shooting maybe 21%. So they've really come alive offensively and defensively. They have seven steals right now. So they're kind of trying to open up things on both ends of the floor. Memphis really doing some good things. They have 20 rebounds right now to Tulsa's 13. So when you have Fuqua Bay and Wright and Creighton down there, you know, really banging and getting some rebounds, it's really going to help them out a lot. Memphis just doing a lot of a lot of good things. Tulsa's had four three-pointers or just one so far in the first half for Memphis. We'll take a look at some of the Tigers. They're traveling blue uniforms. There you have Ariel Hearn finishing on the right-hand side with a nice, just easy layup. Again, right here, splitting two defenders, finishing on the left-hand side with her right hand. Right there, you have Fuqua Bay finishing with a nice move, one power dribble full, one power dribble pull up. The open floor, I mean, they just have such good court vision. Mariah Rouser right there finishing on the right-hand side. And for Tulsa, you have Ashley Clark right here, splitting a, a defender, running at her from the baseline and finishing on the right-hand side. Groby finding Hughes right there on the, uh, the three-point possession. And right here, you have Kelsey Groby also coming off the screen for the little nice dribble pull-up. And then Tiana Reed with the no-look pass to Clark there. I remember that play. Very smooth play. Started by Tiana Reed actually with the defensive steal. Finding Kaden Brady wide open actually when she first came off the bench. Just coming in knocking down threes. So there's a lot of things that both teams are doing well. I think coming out of the half, we'll see which team kind of wants it more and who's going to come alive a little more. You know, Matilda Mossman kind of experimented a bit here, Liz. In the first half, she started two two freshmen, Jordan Holmes and Erica Wakefield. Holmes coming off a 17-point effort at the University of Connecticut uh, earlier this week. But they just couldn't get anything going. They were very cold shooting to start with. They finally brought uh, Tiana Reed in and also uh, Caden Brady and kind of jump-started their offense. But the, the, the freshman starters didn't quite work out for them. Well, they didn't, they didn't work out necessarily today. But, you know, when you have players that are just playing well consistently, you have to add them in more. So starting Wakefield and, and Holmes this game, you know, just trying to keep that momentum going for them, maybe it just didn't work out, uh, you know, for the starting lineup. And it was maybe cold feet or maybe the offense just didn't get going. But I still think they brought a lot and kind of did some things. Eric Wakefield really was pushing the ball in transition early on, just couldn't get the shots to fall. Leading scores in the game so far is Jana Fuqua Bay for uh, Memphis with eight points as well as with her teammate uh, Cheyenne Creighton. Cheyenne Creighton, uh, the 6'1 freshman. You heard Coach Melissa McFerrin at our halftime feature from the conference talking about this young lady being part of the Canadian national team and uh, played well in that first half with four for four perfect in the field for eight points. Tulsa also with a couple players with eight points. 
You have, you have Kelsey Grovey right there with eight points. Ashley Clark also having eight points. And then Caden Brady coming in, knocking down her two threes for six points. So you have three players for Tulsa really trying to do some things and really letting them create for themselves and for their team. All right, we'll take a break here at halftime, come back with our second half action here from the University of Tulsa in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where Tulsa leads Memphis 32-31. a nationally ranked private university. Back at the University of Tulsa Rhino Center where Tulsa leads Memphis 32-31. We'll get back into our basketball mode. I want to congratulate and recognize the Memphis Tiger football team. Liz, what a season they had, 10-3, topped by a 55-48 win over Brigham Young University in the Miami Beach Bowl back on December 22nd. Memphis, one of three teams that tied for the American Conference Championship uh, this season, the title with Cincinnati and Central Florida. And a native Tulsa, Justin Fuente, played his high school football at uh, nearby Tulsa Union High School. Head coach of the Memphis Tigers and uh, did an outstanding job this year. So congratulations, Memphis Tigers. Their 10-3 record and their bowl victory will bring them young. That is good. Good to see the American Athletic Conference really doing some, some good things. I thought it was interesting, too, that Memphis all-time, Memphis is number three in the conference in win percentage in women's basketball, Liz Rowe, finally Connecticut, and Tulane. So uh, Memphis, outstanding uh, yeah. sports program, certainly. Congratulations to them. Memphis uh, University, by the way, is uh, University of Memphis is uh, 21,480 enrollment. Uh, about, though, I guess, what, fifth or so in the conference of uh, Tulsa, the smallest school in Division <laughs> One, 4,352 students. And I'm always amazed at the uh, quality of uh, the athletic programs at the University of Tulsa for such a small school. It's like a big high school, yeah. like a, you know, like a 6A high school. Well, there are high schools in Oklahoma that are bigger than Tulsa. Yeah. Really. Yeah, Think about Broken Arrow, Union, some yeah. of those. It's amazing. But, uh, yeah, they do a great job in athletics, as they do certainly in Memphis as well. Tigers start with the basketball first in this uh, second half in their road blue uniform. And a turnover right away. Back come the Golden Hurricane. Tulsa on the run. There's Groby. She's open for the three, and he gets it. Yeah, three-pointer for Kelsey Groby. I don't know if it was on the line or not, but they signal three. And the first couple minutes coming out of halftime are so important to really set the tone of what it is you're trying to do and trying to get some momentum to carry you through the half. So that was a good shot there by Kelsey Grovey. Good offense for Tulsa. Taylor Williams pass is stolen away by Ashley Clark. Clark will drive all the way for the layup, and Tulsa jumps out with a quick five points to start this second half. And a 37-31 lead. We haven't played a minute of the second half yet. Don't know what Mossman told him in the locker room. <laughs> I, I kind of have a guess, but they really came out here and they're jumping on it fast. Hearn gets it inside to right. Back it comes out now. Working around the perimeter. Inside the baseline. The shot will not fall in there for Brandon Wright, but up and in. Nice follow-up there for Fuqua Bay. Fuqua Bay again. Now she goes to the first double-digit. Uh, well, they did with 11 points here. Excuse me, 10 points for Fuqua Bay. 11 points for Tulsa's Kelsey Groovy after her uh, three-pointer. Over with a shot is Clark. Rims in and out. Won't fall. Rebound brought down by Brandon Wright from Memphis, and here come the Tigers on the run. Taylor Williams pass inside, up and nicely done by Ajana Fukuebe again as she adds to her double-digit total now with 12 to lead all scores. They have a really nice outside-inside game. They're really trying to find 
Fuquabe and Wright and Creighton. I mean, they just do a really good job of sealing, getting the ball inside, and then finishing. Fuquabe now at 12 points, leading all scorers we mentioned, and has pulled Memphis back to within two. Ashley Hughes will inbound. That's the young lady who had the two chipped teeth we showed you earlier <laughs> in a dive for the basketball in the first half of the game at UConn uh, earlier this week. Out there playing, though. Ashley Clark with a drive and a uh, high pass pulled down by Grover and saved there. Now she's in the lane with a running left hander, won't fall. And battle for the rebound, and the Memphis Blue will come out with it. Little Ariel Hearn at 5 7 has the rebound, and she directs the offense for the Tigers. Elmore, back it comes to uh, Hearn again. Ten seconds on the 30-second shot clock. And open for the shot. Won't fall for Taylor Williams. The rebound comes down to Tulsa's Ashley Clark. Hughes on the run. Kelsey Grovey leading Tulsa score with 11 points. Nice pass inside from Grovey. Beautifully done to Ashley Hughes. And Ashley Hughes gets another two. Really good find there by Grovey. Memphis really breaking down defensively. Early in the first half, they were playing really good, tenacious defense. Now they're just letting too much happen. They're running, they're letting Tulsa run too freely. Ashley Hughes, number 13, who just scored now has five points. Couldn't help but notice the young lady has a mouth guard in. <laughs> yeah, I would too. I would have a mouth guard, a face mask, even though that's not for your teeth. I would have it all just for protective measures. A couple of chip teeth you left on the floor at Connecticut, but uh, out here playing today. Oh, nice pass inside and the easy one there for number 22, Brianna Wright. You had Hughes and Turner just kind of sucked up playing on one player left the baseline. Look right. at that drive for Ashley Hughes, mouthpiece and all. Nicely done by the sophomore from Sulphur, Oklahoma. Well, Ashley she, Hughes with seven. She's still being aggressive, which shows a lot of toughness, like Coach said. Shot wouldn't fall. Groby comes back the other way for the Golden Hurricane. In the corner, wide open. The shot taken would not go for Ashley Hughes. Foul underneath. Nicely done by Grovey. She uh, grabbed the ball, trying to get inside, and foul called. I always like to see guards really making an effort to rebound because sometimes it's just that four and five player that just happened to be down there, so they're always down there rebounding. But right there, you saw Grovey kick to the corner to Hughes, and as soon as she knew Hughes was going to shoot it, she started crashing the boards. Amber Holmes was whistled for the foul for Memphis, and Grovey now at the free throw line hits the first. And she's now poised to take the lead in individual scoring in the contest, looking for a 13th point on the afternoon. Almost losing it there and saving it for the Tigers was Ariel Hearn. Inside the pass goes to Creighton. She's looking for some help. Outside the shot taken by Brea Elmore would not fall, and Tulsa with the basketball. It's Ashley Hughes again, and down the sideline it goes. It'll be Tulsa basketball, knocked out of there by Memphis. And we'll take our first media timeout of the second half, 15.47 to play. We'll keep it right here with Tulsa leading 43-37. to 37. Hope you're enjoying our coverage today on the American Digital Network. Great way to see women's college basketball here in the American Athletic Conference. And here's some uh, updates coming here. You'll be back here on Wednesday night with our friend Bruce Howard to call this one. I will be here January 14th. East Carolina comes here to Tulsa at 7 p.m. January 17th. SMU will be at Tulane at 2 o'clock on the digital network. January 20th, Tulsa will be at Tulane at 7 o'clock. The 21st, USF will be at Houston. And the 24th, Houston will be at Memphis. You can catch all those games live on the American Digital Network. Good time to recognize our assistant commissioner of digital media, Mark Hodgkin, and uh, the crew put together by Scott Railing here, our producer here, who does a heck of a job here to uh, bring you the basketball action in uh, all high definition with some great highlights as well. In fact, speaking of highlights, now's a good time to take a look at some of them here in the second half of Tulsa leading Memphis 43 
to 37. Couple, Memphis in the blue. A couple Memphis replays right there. Fupo Bay feel, sealing off really hard, finishing with the left hand. Right now, not really knowing what to do. Two players were sucked up, and Brianna Wright was right there on the backside. For Tulsa, Ashley Clark right there finding Groby early on in the first half. Wide open, just an effortless shot, knocking that down. And right here, there she is, Hughes, going really hard, which surprises me because she, <laughs> <laughs> she had her teeth knocked out, literally. But she's relentless, and she's still going hard. So a lot of good things happening. A lot of national attention for the conference and for Miss Hughes. Uh, call the toughest player in women's college basketball in <laughs> ESPN story this past week after running on the court there at the University of Connecticut. So we congratulate Miss Hughes there. And she's uh, said, played well. Tulsa with the basketball into their own basket and Gobi has it inside there. Oh, knocked away. Nice into the quick hands there of Ariel Hearn. She drives all the way and lays it up and in and a whistle and a foul has a chance at three. Nice job by Ariel Hearn. Their leading scorer for the season over 16 points a game. I love Hearn's facial expressions. She got the steal and like, like opened her mouth, kind of like <laughs> that iconic picture of Muhammad Ali when he's like opening his mouth and screaming. She kind of <laughs> looks like that dribbling all the way down the floor. 5'7 <laughs> junior and she's a native of Memphis, Tennessee. Attended Arlington High School there in the great city of Memphis. And that free throw gives her double figures. She now is at 10 points for the Tigers. Little pressure from Memphis in the backcourt. Just a little token pressure here. And Tulsa breaks it easily with Caden Brady bringing her across the timeline. Tulsa's lead is three as we come to the 15-minute mark of the game. Another turnover for Tulsa, though. And again, it's Ariel Hearn. Hearn. Leading the Tigers charge here. Nice pass underneath and lay up and good by Bria Elmore. Good give and go for the Tigers there. Really good give and go. Almost a travel, but she kept that pivot foot down and found Elmore right there on the backside. The offensive transition led by Ariel Hearn. Tiana Reed trying to get Tulsa's offense uh, stabilized now. Their lead is all of a sudden down to one. Nice pass inside. Reed and laying it up and in is Mariah Turner. Mariah Turner, the 6-2 senior, three-year letter winner for the University of Tulsa. Now, this is really exciting basketball. At this point, they're really exchanging baskets, both really playing well. Inside, the shot would not fall for Brianna Wright, and uh, Brianna missed it. Tulsa comes back with a rebound here. Ashley Hughes trying to get a pass inside to Groby. Groby saves it. Back out to Hughes. Keanu Reed resets the offense for Tulsa. Coming down with a 10-second mark on the clock. Trying for the steal. Missing there was Holmes. Shot taken by Gobi. Will not fall. Rebound underneath. Up and around. It would not fall for Ashley Hughes there. But a foul called on Memphis. And Ashley Hughes will go to the free throw line. That would have given Tulsa a lot of momentum had she knocked that shot down. It kind of looked like it was going to go in, and then it didn't. And everyone was kind of disappointed. But had that happened, they would have had a really good momentum booster. So here's young Ashley Hughes. Take a look at that uh, blue mouth guard. Now <laughs> <laughs> the Sulphur, Oklahoma came into this game averaging three and a half points on the season. And right now she's uh, having a heck of a game with eight points so far and going for her ninth right now at the free throw line. Usually just a 42% free throw shooter. Ashley hits both of those and uh, she now has uh, nine points in the game. Memphis Rouser gives back to Hearn. Jumper, no good by Taylor Williams for Memphis. Tulsa gets the basketball. Long pass down the court to Grovey. Waits for her teammates. Now taking the setting the shot. Will not fall for Ashley Hughes. One and done for Tulsa as well. And rebound pulled down there by Fuqua Bay. And uh, back come the Tigers. Williams with Ashley Hughes on her. Goes inside. And the pass. And we've got Bay looking inside for Brianna Wright. Missed connections there. Turnover against the Tigers. And Tulsa will take over again. It's always hard to pass like post to post because you're so close. It's kind of like sending a letter to your own home, as my college coach <laughs> used to say. Like, it's so close. Just go ahead and finish it. Reed comes back for the Golden Hurricane. Four. 
Oh. Keanu Reed, nicely done with three-pointer. She's kind of a quiet player, but it's like when she scores, you're like, oh, yeah, she's there she is because you, you don't really know that she's doing a lot, but she is. Three would not go for uh, Ariel Hearn, and Tulsa suddenly by leading by eight has a chance to go to double digits. First double-digit lead we've had in the game for either side uh, so far in this contest. Grovey, oh, inside it goes, and tripping and falling there. Mariah Turner took a tumble there. The foul is going to be called on Asiana Fuqua Bay, and that'll be uh, two for Mariah Turner. It's a really tough call because it yeah, kind of seemed so like too. she was starting to fall before Fuqua Bay even um, shifted, but, yeah. you know, she got that little bump in at the end of her fall. So that makes it a foul. Raya Turner's fifth point on the afternoon. If she gets her sixth, Tulsa will have the first double-digit lead of the game. And she does, and Tulsa does. Ten-point <laughs> lead, 52-42. Twelve and a half minutes to play here from the University of Tulsa's Reynolds Center. Tigers need some offense here. Elmore goes inside with her pass to Brianna Wright. Wright makes a move to the left side of the left hand and misses everything. He gets her own rebound, though. Nicely done. Saved there by Hearn. And the jumper is good. A three-pointer. Boy, just they needed by Taylor Williams. So good hustle by him. Kept that ball alive and rewarded for it. Really good hustle. That's right there again. The one averaging 10 rebounds a game. So when she scores, when she shoots, just turn around and box her out. Because if not, she'll do what she did right there and get a rebound. And then they'll score. Caden Brady, 10 seconds. Left on the shot clock, and Tulsa loses the basketball. Stripped away by Ariel Hearn. Hearn leads the break for the Memphis Tigers. Down to the left side, behind the dribble, behind the back dribble in the lane. Shot would not go. Tulsa comes down with the rebound. Picked off there by Mary Turner. Now taken back away by Memphis. Nice job there by Bria Elmore. And all of a sudden, that 10-point lead is now five. And they're really coming alive. Like I said, it was, it was back and forth in the first half. Now... Closing in on 10 minutes, it looks like the momentum's going to switch again. Tulsa's lead cut to five points now as they come back with the basketball. In the corner, the jumper by Brady will not go, but inside is nice enough by Mariah Turner. Big Mariah Turner, the six foot two senior, with the basketball. She now has eight points on the afternoon. Tigers will try to respond here. Carbet has to get it outside. Ariel Hearn resets the offense. In the middle, it goes to Brianna Wright. Down the baseline and dropping it off for Carbet there. She'll make the meal with the right hand and does a nice job under the basket. Up and in. And just a really nice move, just trying to get that little hook in and finish on the right hand side. It was a little cluttered up there in that corner, but she kind of spaced it out a little bit. She now is the leading scorer in the game. Hukwa Bay with 14. Lead the Memphis Tigers. Tulsa with a 54-49 lead in the basketball. Whistle. <laughs> Fouls on Hukwa Bay. Bay here. And we have a break in the action here. 10-10 left to play in the game with Tulsa leading 54-49. It will give you a Chance to catch up with some of the players of the week here in the American Athletic Conference. Right there, you have the freshman of the week, Aaliyah Gregory, the 5'10 guard from UCF. Gregory scored 21 points in the UCF win over Tulsa on Saturday, falling one point shy of her career high while shooting 61% from the field. The freshman added six rebounds, two assists, and went perfect a perfect 5-for-5 five five from the charity stripe versus the Hurricane. Gregory helped seal the win for the Knights versus Tulsa in the final seconds by blocking a three-point attempt, securing the ball, and drawing a foul. She made both of her subsequent free, shot, free throws with 13 seconds remaining, and they won 76-70. to 70. Recognize the uh, two coaches here, too. I mentioned uh, Matilda Mossman, her fourth season in Richard Tulsa. We've got our Player of the Week from Temple. 
Player of the week is Erica Colville, the 6-1 junior guard from Temple. Colville had a pair of career games for Temple as the Owls, Owls went undefeated in American play last week and improved to 3-0 in league play. The junior averaged 22.5 points and 14 rebounds per game in wins versus SMU at and at Cincinnati. Against the Mustangs, Colville scored a career high of 24 points to go along with 13 rebounds, 3 steals, and 2 assists. The Michigan native went 9 for 10 from the field in Saturday's win over the Bearcats and finished with 21 points and a career high of 15 rebounds notching her fourth consecutive double-double. Our Players of the Week in the American Athletic Conference. Mount Channing Talent, get out there and support your American Athletic Conference team wherever you're watching around the nation here. In the Tulsa bench, you mentioned Matilda Mossman, 20 years as a coach in high school and uh, college, better than a 66.7 win percentage. Memphis breaks their huddle. Memphis Tigers coached by Melissa McFerrin. She's always been a Tiger, it seems like. Played her college ball for Mizzou. M-I-Z-I gave her the start of the game here. Led the Tigers to a sweet 16-82 and a Big 8 tournament title in 83. Head coach at American University. Was in the WNBA for a while. Then now in her seventh season at the uh, University of Memphis. Two outstanding coaches here in the American Athletic Conference. Driving and not able to fall as Caden Brady missed the easy layup and coming back as Memphis here with a chance to cut into the Tulsa lead. Pass comes inside. Tulsa double teams with a shot up and in. Nicely done. Beautiful finish there by Fuqua Bay. Finishing really strong around the basket. Posting hard. I mean, she does a lot. She's been a very reliable player for, for Melissa McFerrin. She's been starting since her freshman year and she has 50 consecutive starts. And 16 points to lead all scores in the game here. They're driving for Tulsa was Caden Brady had it knocked away there. So Tulsa will have it with 15 seconds on the shot clock. 9.29 on the game clock and Tulsa's lead is down to three. Just a, few, like a moment ago it was double figures at 10. Nice pass inside. It comes out of bounds but knocking it away. And a foul going to be called on Memphis. Memphis now uh, running up some team fouls here, Liz. They are. They have five team fouls in comparison to Tulsa's one. So being really aggressive down low, but I'm sure those fouls could be less if they were to slide their feet a little more. Ashley Hughes, how's this for a comeback for this young lady who <laughs> talks so much about her broken teeth and stuff, and now all of a sudden she's got double figures, 11 points, averaging 3.5 points on the season. So the sophomore Oklahoma sophomore is uh, really showed some courage and some fine play this afternoon here. Tulsa's lead back to five. Jordan Holmes jumped out on Elmore there and has it reversed the ball to Hearn. Back it comes to Elmore now between the circles. Taylor Williams drives and kicked it out there. Now running left-hander nicely done there by, again, Vuqua Bay. She has been the star for Memphis with now 18 points on the afternoon lead on all scores. Looks like if Tulsa wants to stop Memphis, they're going to have to stop Fuqua Bay first. Erica Wickfield in real trouble there, the freshman. Ball knocked out of bounds, and Tulsa lucky to keep that one. She got double teamed, and they really mm -hmm. froze the freshman here. Jordan Holmes for Tulsa, around it comes to Wakefield. The uh, two freshmen is making her sixth start this afternoon. Shot will not fall. Rebound comes down to Cheyenne Creighton. Okay. Save me again, Liz. Nicely <laughs> you know, done. I always will. <laughs> <laughs> Quick hands of Liz Lay on display. Made her such a superstar with the Huskies at the University of Washington. This seems like yesterday, right? Oh, you know. <laughs> Just the other day. <laughs> Glad you saw those quick hands, though. Memphis Tigers trying to get closer to TU here. They're not knocked away. Tulsa leading 56-53. Their lead of 10 is now down to three. Memphis with the basketball. We have a foul called on uh, Tulsa. They're just their second team foul of the half. It's really going to come down to the wire because Fuqua Bay right now is leading her team with 18 points, and she doesn't look like she's going to slow down anytime soon. And then Tulsa really is, they found their rhythm offensively. Memphis now. 25 seconds on the uh, clock, plenty of time. 
inside. Rupabe again. Didn't like it, so it comes outside to Hearn. Ten seconds as Hearn pulls up and takes the jumper and hits it. And just that quickly, Memphis is back to within one point. Wakefield drives. Sends it over to Brady. Now to Reed. Brady in the lane. Outside it goes to Ashley Clark. And lazy pass. Almost with the steal, there was Ariel Hearn, but Tulsa gets it back with eight seconds to shoot. Wakefield takes it, it's short. Battle underneath there. Basket comes out, uh, ball comes out to Tulsa. Caden Brady takes it underneath in a fresh 30 second clock for the Golden Hurricane. And Matilda Moss went up telling her ladies to uh, move the basketball some. There's the nice job in the offense. And going around the left side, laying it up and in there was Tiana Reed. Good give and go for Tulsa. Really good give and go. Nice read. <laughs> no pun intended, I guess. Nice read <laughs> by Reed yes. for the backdoor pass. Trying to go inside to Fuqua Bay, and she took a tumble there and a foul call underneath on Tulsa. Well, you mentioned Melissa McFerrin. Who, uh, She's always been a Tiger, seems like, started in Mizzou and now in her seventh season with Memphis. And Liz, I uh, had a chance to talk with her earlier this afternoon. Liz Lay here with Memphis head coach Melissa McFerrin. Coach, your team's on a two-game winning streak after beating East Carolina at home and UCF on the road. How do you plan on keeping the streak going? Well, I think those two games have given us a, a lot of confidence. Uh, the East Carolina obviously was a great overtime win and great play execution down the stretch. Uh, the game at UCF, another hard-fought game. I really felt like in those two games we had great contributions off the bench and we were really solid on the boards. And any time we have an opportunity to be solid on the offensive glass, we, we can kind of support our shooting percentage a little bit. And speaking of off the bench, freshman Bria Elmore really stepped up that East Carolina game and had 11 points. Are you kind of expecting her to fill some offensive shoes there? Absolutely. We've been waiting for that to happen all year long. Bria Elmore is a wonderful offensive talent. She's getting her feet uh, a little more solid on the defensive end of the floor. That's going to give her more minutes. But she's a young lady who can score. She's got a lot of confidence, and she can score in a lot of different ways. So it was really great to see that because that's the production we were expecting from her off the bench. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, and good luck. I'm Liz Lay, and this is the American Digital Network. All right, Liz, uh, interesting comments here by the coach. She's done a good job for the Memphis Tigers. Yeah, she really has. I mean, they have a lot of momentum coming off of those two wins, especially the overtime game versus East Carolina at home. So I think she's just trying to ride that wave, you know. She's got to offer a lot to her young ladies, too, because she has experience at the pro level, WNBA. She was a coach on the match here over the Washington Mystics and the New York Liberty and had also run at American University before taking the job at Memphis. But she told me she's always been a Tiger with the black and gold Tiger of Mizzou or <laughs> now the Blue Tigers of Memphis. So uh, Coach Melissa McFerrin, her seventh season with a uh, record of 116-93 at Memphis. So I had, a, by the way, her best season, 25-8 and eight in 2011 and 12. Tigers now just down by three here with under seven minutes to play at Tulsa. Taking their jumper is Elmore, won't fall. Good block out by Tulson coming down with the basketball is Tiana Reed. Reed ahead to Brady. Brady gets the pass inside. Turner couldn't find any shot to put up. Puts it back out and on the run. Nice running one-hander by Caden Brady. Really nice drive there. She drove really hard. They're really playing her tight on the three-point line. They don't want her to knock down any threes, but she's versatile, so she can get to the basket as well. Six points from the senior from Hilton, Oklahoma. Coach McFerrin trying to get her team to get the ball inside. Taylor Williams starts to drive, and a foul is going to be called. Whistle Tulsa's Ashley Clark, I believe, for the foul. Yeah, Clark with the foul. That's the fourth team foul on Tulsa. Memphis uh, had five team fouls real quickly in the second half, and they still stand at five at this point. Ashley Hughes uh, comes in for Tulsa to replace Ashley Clark. Plenty of time here, 20 seconds on the 30-second clock. 
Tulsa zone bothering Memphis. So I'm having a tough time getting the ball inside. Yeah, the, I mean, they don't want Fukube to score because she's oh. been doing so well. But when you have <laughs> multiple players who can do a lot, you have Taylor Williams out there who can knock down the three. So Fukube not too upset right now. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done, an outside shot there. Brady drives, has the ball knocked away, saved there by Grove. She's still battling for it. Jump ball is going to be called. Possession arrow favors Tulsa. So Tulsa fortunate to keep possession there at the 521 mark. You hear the crowd getting upset. They're all calling foul, but looks like two hands, well, four hands were on the ball. Two people just kind of wrestling for it. It's one of three games the American Athletic Conference for women's basketball this Saturday afternoon. Uh, Central Florida at Cincinnati, East Carolina at Houston, along with our Memphis Tulsa game. Oh, Grubb with a nice move in the lane. Could not get it to fall. They rolled all around the run. Would not go down. And Ariel Hearn, the five foot seven junior, comes down from Memphis. Tigers, their chance to tie or take the lead here. As they approach the five minute mark. Pass inside by Ariel Hearn, looking inside for Brianna Wright, but just a bit too far for her. That's a turnover against the Tigers. Coming down to the wire, all possessions are really important at this point. You really need to capitalize. Memphis needs to get some stops. Tulsa needs to score. Anything you can do to kind of turn the last four minutes into your favor would be really beneficial, especially for Memphis right now since they're down. Tulsa's not in a super rush to score. Groby looking inside for Turner. Lucky the ball got kicked away there. She threw in the three to one. Now whistling a foul there. Hughes gets knocked to the floor. And the foul is on Taylor Williams. That is the sixth team foul. So that means the next team foul against Memphis will send Tulsa to the free throw line. As is under their own basket, Tiana Reed will start us off. Got the shot clock reset to 30, and here we go. Oh, nice to that inside. And Kelsey Grover with a nice inside pass from Tiana Reed. And Tulsa. Get your lead back to four, 62-58. Grovey always finishes well around the basket, so containing her is going to be important if they want to break into this, this deficit a little bit. Outside shot would not go for Ariel Hearns. Ball comes out to Tulsa. Brady with the rebound. She gives it off in the backcourt to Tiana Reed. Important possessions now, Liz. You mentioned coming down the four-minute mark here. Tulsa with a four-point lead in the basketball. I mean, you just have to capitalize, really. Right here, Tulsa, they don't have to rush. They're up, they're up four points, so they can take time on each possession and make sure they get a good quality shot. Memphis does not need to do that huh. right there, which is foul and get the hand check and just play straight up defense and try and get a stop. And that was the 17th foul. Tulsa will right. go to the free throw line to shoot one right. and one. We have a uh, break here as we come to another media timeout. And we heard earlier from uh, Memphis head basketball coach Melissa Fern. Now let's uh, join Liz. She catches up with the University of Tulsa's head basketball coach. Liz Lay here with Tulsa head coach Matilda Mossman. Coach, you're coming off of a really tough loss to number two ranked UConn. How important is this for a bounce back game? Well, the UConn game, uh, they, they had been beating people by 37 points a game anyway. And after Duke lost to them by 31, we really didn't feel that, that badly about losing uh, the way we did. In fact, we found some positives in the second half. Uh, in the last 10 minutes, we outscored them, I think, so, uh, something like 21 to 10. So uh, we, we took some positives from the game, and, and hopefully that will help us in today's game. Now, Jordan Holmes is going to start in today's game, and she had 17 against UConn, but why the change for today's game? Well, you know, we, we, with our team, we're, we're trying to get sustained – a constant effort over a sustained period of time and we've had two or three guys give us effort at different times and different people on the floor and so we've changed our lineup quite a bit this year and we just felt like Jordan played so fearless against uh, Connecticut and we felt like uh, she had had a, a couple of games leading up to that game and so we thought we would just reward her you know she goes in and she's fearless and she plays with energy uh, and we've got to get her uh, continued minutes in order for her to get better. Well, thank you so much for your time and good luck in today's game. I'm Liz Lay, and this is the American Digital Network. I love that attitude from Matilda Mossman. Sure, they lost to Connecticut uh, 98 to 60, <laughs> but just some positives out of that. And let's face it, American Athletic Conference is very fortunate to have the best 
women's college basketball program in the nation for years and years. They've won nine national championships. They, of course, have won the first American Athletic Conference title and the tournament title, and mm -hmm. we favored again this year, number two right now in the nation. And uh, once again, the Huskies, they're the measuring stick for college basketball. I mean, they really are. If if you meet somebody and they say they're going to play basketball at UConn, you know that they are a very, very special player. One that you probably don't want to bet on playing one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> you just want to say, oh, well, okay, and move on. <laughs> well, you're a Husky too, right? Yes. The Northwest that, side. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Technically, I was. <laughs> just to say, I was one of the Huskies. Right. Great right the University of Washington. School. I'll That's just right. say, you know, I was a Husky back in college, so, and then hopefully they're like, whoa. And ah, be impressed. <laughs> Kane Brady gets both of her free throws. That helps Tulsa with a 64-58 lead. Coming down the three and a half minute mark there and up in the air. Turn. Wow. Great job to save it right there. She was blocked, but came down with the basketball quickly. Got it out of her hands. Oh, nice move inside and trying to get it to fall is Brianna Wright. Nice drop step move there, but just couldn't get it to fill into the basket. There's a foul, though, against Tulsa's Mariah Turner on the shooting uh, effort, so it'll be a two shot attempt here. For Brianna Wright, the 6 1 junior out of Greenville, Mississippi, leading rebounders, had nine rebounds in each of her last uh, three games. Free throw would not fall. Has a lot of experience. She started her collegiate career at South Alabama, then transferred to Memphis, and now she's doing some good things for them, mainly bringing her tremendous rebounding efforts. So Brianna Wright now has five points to go along with her five rebounds in the game this afternoon. And Memphis putting some real pressure on now in the backcourt. As they realize it didn't work for them. Steele taking away the Tigers now. They throw it away. It's going to stay, though, with Memphis. Yeah, they slapped that full court pressure on and Tulsa had a tough time handling it. Memphis gets a turnover, and the Tigers now have a chance to cut into that Tulsa lead with 3.18 to play. Tulsa almost got it back right there. Wasn't a, wasn't a very good uh, pass there by Williams, and Coach gave her that look like, <laughs> if you do that one more time. <laughs> yes. You're over here sitting with me. Yes. <laughs> nice save there by Fuquan Bay as she uh, gets it on. Left side, Taylor Williams takes the three and hits it. Oh, there's a big one for the Tigers who cut that lead now just at two points. Tulsa. Really big shot there for, for Memphis, excuse me. She's only shooting 21% from the three-point line, but you could tell she shot that shot with confidence. Tulsa getting some pressure, getting across the midcourt line, though, and Groby now handling the basketball for the Golden Hurricane. Reed with five seconds on the shot clock gets it in the corner and Ashley Hughes hits it. Three-pointer for Ashley Hughes on the young sophomore who came in with a 3.5 point average. This goes to double figures here. Great job by Ashley Hughes and Memphis is going to call a timeout here. The 2.28 to play and Tulsa's lead is now five points as Ashley Hughes now with 14 points in the game. Tulsa's second leading score right behind Kelsey Groves with 15. Show you some of the highlights here this uh, second half to this point. Also leading by five here at the 228 mark. Tigers with the basketball. Doing a couple good things right here. There's Ariel Hearn with the one dribble pull up right in the middle of the key. Very fluent. I really like her shots. And right there you have Taylor Williams just, just now knocking down that three. Have a couple Tulsa replays for you. And that was Ashley Hughes, the one we've been talking about with her mouth guard in. And then here <laughs> is Caden Brady. Driving really off the basket, finishing with the left hand. All right, strategy is important now, Liz, as we come down to this. Uh, Memphis has already put Tulsa in the bonus free throw situation. They have 17 fouls. Tulsa has five team fouls, so another one to give. We've got a timeout on the court. We'll take a break here on the American Digital Network. Tulsa Pom Pom Girls entertaining the crowd here this afternoon at the Reynolds Center in Tulsa where nice and warm inside and in the 20s you mentioned outside been a little cold snap here in the Sooner State. 
And some good basketball action, though, inside. Golden Hurricane leading the Tigers 67-62 as we're down under two and a half minutes. Memphis with the basketball and a five-point deficit to overcome. Let's see what kind of strategy Coach Melissa McFerrin employs here. She's trying to get her team inside more, but uh, kind of tough time against the Tulsa zone. Now taking the outside shot, though, no good short by Hearn. Whistle underneath. That was actually a really good wow. play. What happened was is Hearn passed it around to the left side of the floor. She got a back a back screen and kind of flared to the three point line because obviously you need a you need a score. And she's one of their better three point shooters, shooting thirty five percent from the three. So she had a wide open shot, just couldn't convert it into three points. Well the whistle on Memphis really hurts with them mm -hmm. giving Tulsa one on one free throws, not what they need at this point. Hitting the free throw is Kelsey Grovey. She's got one more. Grovey was 16 on the afternoon to lead all Tulsa scores. Perfect again. Grovey with 17 on the afternoon. And Tulsa's lead is now 7 with 2.15 to play. Tigers have to move the basketball. Coach McCurran trying to get him to do that. And it's a whistle and a foul turnover against Memphis as Taylor Williams grabbed. The Tulsa player and a whistle and a foul. That sends Tulsa back to the free throw line, one and one. So the clock is stopped, but Tulsa getting a chance to add some points. And you see Memphis just really frustrated right now. Just can't really get things to go their way offensively. There's a lot of tips that Tulsa's getting. They've really turned up the tenacity on defense, and it's really pushing Memphis back on their heels a little bit. Remember, Memphis came in on a two-game win streak. They won at home 60-57 overtime against East Carolina. They went on the road with a nice win at Central Florida, 70-66. You know, Tulsa lost at Central Florida 76-70 a week ago and then uh, took that 98-60 beating at UConn on Wednesday. So they're trying to break their losing streak. Nice free throw up and in there by Tiana Reed. She'll get another one. Tulsa, the first of three straight games here at home at the Reynolds Center for the Golden Hurricane. And for the Memphis Tigers, they'll return home on Wednesday to host Cincinnati. For you Memphis fans, get out there and support your Tigers. Shot would not fall, and rebound comes down to Kelsey Grovey. And now Memphis has got to put some pressure in backcourt. Coach McFerrin employing her team to uh, get some defensive pressure, and they do there. Knocked out of bounds, but it will stay with uh, the Golden Hurricane. 148 to play. Time off, 32nd timeout is taken by Tulsa. We'll keep it right here with 148 to play. And strategy now the rest of the way, uh, Liz, uh, for Tulsa, of course, work the clock. Yeah, they have time, you know, on their on their side. And Memphis is not that last possession, just not a very smart possession. I mean, they rushed the shot. Feet weren't set. I mean, it was a it was open. It was just not just not a just not a good shot for Memphis there. Yeah. 32-31 halftime lead for Tulsa. Have now moved it out to a 71-62 lead as we come down to the final uh, minute 48 of this contest. Chris Lincoln along with Liz Lake. Glad you with us here at Tulsa. Liz, I've enjoyed doing these games with the American Digital Network. I know. We've it's had so fun. much fun sure together. Have. We're a little duo. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll be joined by Bruce Howard, the voice of the Golden Hurricane on Wednesday for the American Digital Network telecast. The next one coming as Tulsa will be uh, hosting Cincinnati on Wednesday night here. Toss the basketball and just trying to run some clock. Double teamed in the backcourt. Getting it across there is Tiana Reed. And Reed is now double, triple teamed, but a whistle and a foul is going to be called. All right, check it. It's a timeout. It is a 30 second timeout. Tulsa got the timeout before the uh, foul was called, so we'll keep it right here. 141 to play. Leading scores for Tulsa Kelsey Grovey, double zero. She has 17 points on the afternoon. And by that courageous Ashley Hughes, young lady we talk so much about with her two front teeth knocked out of the <laughs> you know, game or chipped, I should say. She has 14 also in double figures for Tulsa on the floor is Caden Brady with 10. And meanwhile, for the Memphis Tigers, their leading scorer, she has been pretty much all season. She had a few quad bay. She has uh, 18 points. And uh, Ariel Hearn, their season leading scorer, at 16 points a game. She has 12 points uh, on the contest so far this afternoon. She struggled a little bit today, Ariel Hearn has, but I don't even think she's had a break. I think she's played the entire game. She averages 33 minutes a game, so it is likely that she 
is a little tired coming coming down the stretch. Her and the first team all conference player for the Memphis Tigers as a sophomore last year. Whistle and a foul is going to be called. It's going to be whistled on the Memphis Tigers. They're getting up off the court is Ariel Hearn there. You just talked about her. And uh, this is now a 10th team foul, which means Tulsa will shoot two. That's uh, not good news for Memphis at this stage. Two free throws coming here for Tulsa's leading scorer, Kelsey Grovey. Kelsey, by the way, is perfect in the free throw line uh, this afternoon, four for four. I didn't jinx it. I, I was just I about to say, I, I thought you jinxed it because every time. Uh, it never fails. <laughs> She's a good free throw shooter, though. Shoots almost 77% on the season. And perfect. Didn't jinx her at all. How about that? <laughs> and now she goes to 19 points to take individual honors here in the game. Quick shot up from three and won't fall for Hearn. Nice rebound underneath and bounding for it there was a shot of Fuqua Bay and uh, knocked out of bounds. It'll stay underneath for the Tigers. Maya Rouser will inbound it. Hearn has it knocked away. It's going to stay with the Tigers. You see McFerrin really trying to set some things up, just running every play she can even think of right now just to try and get a shot off. Good pressure from Tulsa. And losing the basketball is Hearn on the floor, driving forward for Tulsa's Reed, but it comes back to Memphis. Whistle and a foul is going to be called now on Tulsa. That is only their sixth team foul, though, so it'll be Memphis ball out of bounds under their own basket. 30 second fresh, 30 second possession clock, 120 left in the game. Well, Coach Matilda Massa won't like that. Tiana Reed mm -hmm. on the out of bounds play. Call for the foul, which, by the way, is the Seventh team foul against Tulsa, which means that now Memphis with the sh with the uh, clock stop, they'll get to shoot free throws. Putting Ariel Hearn at the line, she shoots about 57 percent from the line. Just really, she's really like their go-to player, and she's only a junior. She still has another year left. She was all American All Conference as a freshman. She already has over 1,200 points. She's fifth in scoring in the conference. I mean, she she does a lot for her team. In 21 games, she's had 20 points or more, and she and she can shoot the three. So she's really like an all-around player. Got a little frustrated today, but she's somebody that you would probably want at the line at a point like this. Aaron cuts that Tulsa lead from 11 to nine, but the clock is against the Tigers right now, and in the backcourt and double team was Caden Brady, and she's fouled by the Tigers. We'll go to the other end to shoot some more free throws here. And again, remember, that's a double bonus for Tulsa the rest of the way, so they'll be shooting two with Caden Brady, who's a 70% free throw shooter. Caden, a senior from uh, Helton, Oklahoma. Looking for 11th point of the afternoon. She gets it there. Back on the Tigers. They've got to score in a hurry. Shot would not fall there for Elmore. Bounces out of bounds, and the Golden Hurricane will take over. Just about a two, two and a half possession game right now. Nice job of there. Steal inside for Hugo Bay. Made the steal. Knocked away by Tulsa, but Memphis will keep possession. So good defensive effort by the Tigers. They haven't given up yet here with 106 to play. Got to score the ball quickly, though. By Rouser. And it comes to Hearn. Good defense for Tulsa. That's Ashley Clark on Hearn. Hearn now finds an opening. Takes the three-pointer and hits it. Right before the shot clock went off, and that cuts the Tulsa lead to 74-67, a quick timeout for Melissa McFerrin on the Memphis bench. 
This is what they're going to play it now is the foul and uh, stop the clock game. Yeah, I, and for Hearn on that shot, I really wish she would have come alive sooner because you could tell like early in the second half that she was getting a little bit frustrated. And now with 57 seconds left, she's knocking down a three and, and getting involved. But it's really been Fuqua Bay for this, for this Memphis team. Uh, with her 18 points in the second, not in the second half, 18 points yeah. for the game, but most of them coming in the second half. But right now they just need to get a stop, get a steal, and try to knock down another three. I'm sure they'll try and find Hearn. And for Tulsa, catch the ball and hold it. Play keep away and don't let them foul you. Ariel Hearn just went over her season average. Uh, that three-pointer gave her 17 for the afternoon and uh, second in scoring honors to uh, Nicole Bay here with her 18 points. The game leader, though, is uh, Tulsa's Kelsey Grover with 19, double zero for TU. And she has the basketball right now on the inbound pass. Tulsa trying to get the ball in the front court, but a whistle and a foul. Stops the clock with 53.8 seconds to play. But Tulsa gets a chance again to shoot free throws. It's a good press, though. They almost had like a three people on, on Brady at one point. Almost got a steal. The foul was on Fuqua Bay, and looks like she's fouled out of the game. A very good performance, though, nonetheless. 18 points on the afternoon to lead her Memphis Tigers. Hate to see her on the bench, though, in these final 53-plus seconds. Caden Brady was one of two in her last uh, attempt here. Brady makes both free throws. Memphis comes across uh, the midcourt line with 50 seconds left to play. Shot would not fall for Hearn and a whistle in the backcourt as uh, Bria Elmore grabbed Tiana Reed in the backcourt. And again, Tulsa goes the other side to shoot free throws. And now you're just adding to the margin of victory, it looks like. Liz is the University of Tulsa. Comes up with a big performance here this afternoon. A little frustrating for Coach Melissa McFerrin, whose team came in here on a two-game win streak. I'm sure it is frustrating for Memphis, but for Tulsa, I mean, coming off that loss to UConn and then kind of coming in here and being able to regain your confidence. The first 10 minutes of the game, it kind of looked like their confidence was you know, still taking a little bit of a hit, but coming out of halftime especially, they just came ready to play and just like a brand new team. So it's good for their confidence. Ashley Hughes grabbed that rebound off the uh, missed free throw attempt there by the Hurricane. So Tulsa has possession and fouled again. So now to the free throw line of Tiana Reed. She's a transfer from Butler, Kansas Community College. She's had three starts so far this sophomore. 63.6% free throw shooter uh, on the season. And she's in double figures this afternoon, looking for a 13th point. It rolls in. And Tulsa now with a commanding 79-67 lead as we come to the final 30 seconds of this one. Taking the three-pointer, Rosa will not go. Battling point underneath, went off the hands of Brianna Wright. And Tulsa will have the basketball. But Memphis still keeping that press on, Liz. They're not quitting here. Not giving up at all. And I mean, that's what you got to do. There's a shield right there. That's why they do it. How yep. about that? Stole by her and put up and in by Amber Holmes. And a quick timeout again. So the lead is now 10, 18 seconds left. But it's, these are real teaching moments, though, for Coach Melissa McFerrin. It is. You really want to be able to show your team, okay, yes. We are down 10 points with 18 seconds to go, but we're still going to play. We still are going to run plays and, and play Memphis basketball. So, I mean, it's good because she has a young team and she can kind of grow with them through this. A couple highlights are Tulsa in their home white uniforms this afternoon. Right there, you see Reed forcing that pass to Ashley Hughes and then just knocking down that three-pointer. Right here, you have Caden Brady driving super hard to the basket, finishing with the right hand. Right there, again, Caden Brady with the three and then Mariah Turner with the finish on the left hand side. We tell us the basketball under the Memphis basket. The shot clock is off and just 18.1 seconds left on the game clock this afternoon. 
Brady gets the ball into Mariah Turner, knocked away. It'll still be Tulsa basketball as they're near midcourt. Once again, Caden Brady will uh, inbound for Tulsa. Reed almost lost the basketball, but saves it. Now a long, dangerous pass there. Still controlled by Tulsa with 10 seconds left. Holding the basketball is Kelsey Grovey, leading scorer for Tulsa this afternoon. Leading scorer in the game with 19 points. She'll dribble it out. And it's a final. Tulsa, after holding just a 1.32-31 lead at the half, comes on to win this one 79 to 69. The University of Tulsa now will go to 7 and 8 on the season, They'll even their American Athletic Conference record at 1 and 2. The Tigers fall back to 508 and 7 and fall below 500. Their American Athletic Conference record now at 2 and 3. We'll take a break here before we come back with our final recap. And uh, this is the American Digital Network. nationally ranked private university. Liz Lay here with head Tulsa coach Matilda Mossman. Coach, congratulations on your win over Memphis. Before the game, we talked about trying to redeem yourself from the UConn loss. How do you think y'all did? Here post game at the University of Tulsa. Tulsa has defeated Memphis this afternoon here at the Reynolds Center. Tulsa turning a one point halftime lead into a double digit victory here. I think we're ready now for uh, Liz. Let's go back with her with the uh, player of the game here for the Hurricane. Liz Lay here with Tulsa's guard Ashley Hughes. You have been coined a really tough player throughout the week because in your last game you got a couple teeth knocked out and then you come out here and you play as hard as you can. Kind of what was going through your head? Were you hesitant at first? Today I just really wanted game so I thought my team deserved that from me and I uh, just like to be aggressive and thankfully some shots uh, I was able to knock some shots down and um, just hustle and and make something happen well we think you did great with your 14 point performance and thank you for being an inspiration to all the athletes in America for and this is the American Digital Network All right, thank you, Liz. Congratulations again to our uh, player of the game. And uh, she's been the story all afternoon for the University of Tulsa, the young lady Ashley Hughes, who had those two chipped teeth in the uh, tough loss up at Connecticut here. She came back, though, and uh, had a big game this afternoon, helping her Golden Hurricane to a 79-69 win over the Memphis Tigers here in Tulsa this afternoon. As Ashley Hughes finished with 14 points, Tulsa's second leading scorer, leading the way for the uh, 
Golden Hurricane end for the uh, game. Kelsey Groby had a game-high 19 points. Also for Tulsa with uh, uh, double figures, Tiana Reed with 13 and Caden Brady with 13. It was Zayzana Fuquan Bay with 18 points. And uh, Ariel Hearn had uh, 17 points to lead Memphis in uh, double figures here. As Tulsa with a 32-31 halftime lead goes on to win this one by 10, 79 to 69. Liz? You know, I think it was a good game. I think yeah. Memphis really had some parts where they looked collectively as a team. They looked really good. Um, they did some good things. Fuqua Bay did a lot for Memphis. And then Tulsa really, they just rose to the occasion. They wanted to redeem themselves from a loss against UConn. They played really hard, especially Hughes, who got her teeth knocked out and then <laughs> <laughs> came today to play. So I think it was a good game. Memphis just fell a little bit short, and I'm sure throughout the week they'll get in there and correct the things that they did wrong today. Mentioned the first of three home games. The University of Tulsa, they're back here on uh, Wednesday night. They'll be uh, playing host to East Carolina, and they will also be here, the American Digital Network, with Liz Lay working with uh, Bruce Howard on that contest. Then a week from today, Tulsa also hosts Houston, while Memphis comes back. Uh, home and they'll be hosting Cincinnati on Wednesday the 14th at 7 p.m. before they go on the road to East Carolina, then back in uh, on the 24th to host the Houston Cougars. So uh, the Tulsa Golden Hurricane winning at 79 to 69 to uh, go to 7 8 in the season, 2 and 2 in the American Athletic Conference. The Tigers even their market 8 and 8 and go to 2 and 3 in the American Athletic Conference. I want to again thank the folks working with us today, the American Digital Network, Scott Reeling, our producer. Uh, Martin Winterstorm with our uh, graphics and associate producer, technical director Carl Harper, and Dustin Gunch with the replay operator, and Mark Hodgkin, our assistant commissioner of digital media. Thank you all, the American Digital Network. And now for Liz Lay, I'm Chris Lincoln. Again, the final score from Tulsa, Oklahoma, the Tulsa Golden Hurricane 79, the Memphis Tigers 69. So long from Tulsa.